So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. This is the book, the ultimate guide to rebuild civilization, and you can see sacred geometry right here on the front. If it's not apparently obvious, while this is branded as a really cool niche item that holds the collective knowledge of all of civilization and technology in it, such that you could rebuild it if ever there was a complete reset, you begin to immediately see biblical imagery with goats and sheep, images of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, witchcraft type rituals, and I know if you think I'm over exaggerating, look at that witch hidden behind there, and little demons hidden on almost every page. Science actually proven that Adam and Eve were real and that we are all their descendants? Check this out. In 1987, Rebecca Kahn, Mark Stone King, and Alan Wilson published a paper in the journal Nature that dropped a bombshell on our understanding of human origins. This is a spirit. When someone is playing the 1994 Illuminati card game, each player must choose to play as one of the eight classes of Illuminati Brotherhoods. There is a class named the Adepts of Hermes, another class is called the Servants of Cthulhu, and lastly, we want to highlight a mysterious class called the Bermuda Triangle. As we move forward, it will become clear to those with spiritual discernment that these are the cards being played. Let me tell you where skin color comes from, but first, the idea that there are different races is racism. Let me say that again. Just the proposal that there are different races is racism. That idea itself justifies everything that follows it. Y'all ain't caught on to this yet. Darwinian evolution is racism, fam. It's eugenics. Justifies genocides. Okay, so I did find this on TikTok. However, I personally went on to DuckDuckGo and I looked into this information and I was able to find every single one of these copyrights, okay? So this woman did film work back in the day and so she knew that you have to copyright your, your scripts. And so she said, if we're watching a movie, then where are the scripts? Welcome back to Highly Motivated, where we have addicted ourselves to the ministry of the saints. Today, we have a video from Shattered Paradise with some interesting decodes about a recent false flag and connections between the spiritual, the year of the dragon, the Illuminati card game, and Epstein Island. We also have proof that humanity came from one man and one woman as if we didn't already know that, the Bible says so. But it's about time that science catches up with God. <laughs> God tells us what it is. God created everything and then science runs to catch up with what God did and or trying to disprove what the Bible already tells us about what God did. <laughs> We also have an interesting book that seems to contain some of the forbidden knowledge that was given to man by the fallen angels and some very interesting copyrights that I found that you're not going to believe. We've got all that and so much more as well as the continuation of our Sound Doctrine series. Today we are in Romans chapter 14, so buckle up. Get comfortable, and let's get into it. Now, I definitely want to preface this clip by saying, if you have seen this particular gentleman on TikTok, I do not agree with everything this guy posts. In fact, there's a lot that he posts that I don't 
agree with. But this in particular, and the fact that race is not real, it is actually a construct created to divide us and make us easier to control. So with that said, let's get into this video. Let me tell you where skin color comes from, but first, the idea that there are different races is racism. Let me say that again. Just the proposal that there are different races is racism. That idea itself justifies everything that follows it. Y'all ain't caught on to this yet. Darwinian evolution is racism, fam. It's eugenics. Justifies genocides. It ain't even right. true. It ain't even true. The idea that there are different races of humans is not true. There's no such thing as race. There are nations. And all the nations Amen. came from the loins of Noah via his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Every single one of us were present in the loins of Adam, the OG human. And we're all at least 56 cousins, fam. Darwinian evolution is a farce to justify a new world order. I ain't gotta prove it. Go look at the mountain of receipts. This is where the eugenicists get their ideas from. What are we racing for? Superiority. What kind? Genetic superiority. They're doing it right now. I'm not making that up. Go watch any talk whatsoever being given about CRISPR. Gene editing. It's going to be illegal and immoral, which makes it... Also, what do you think was going on in Epstein's New Mexico ranch? That was, by the way, on the governor's property. Religious. To not edit your kids' genes here in the very near future. They said so out of their own mouths on a stage to thunderous applause. That's not what this talk is about. Where does skin color come from? Look at this right here. These are all shades of brown. Notice nobody's black, nobody's white. I'm not even beige, bruh. Brown gets a lot darker than taupe and never turns black. Gets lighter than beige and never turns white. Because white is the absence of all color and black is the combination of all color. Why didn't I say colors? Because color is a spectrum. Colors are made from red, green, and blue anyway. People can look real different from one another. Why is that? Well, macroevolution is false, but microevolution is called adaptation. A kangaroo might think he's better than a possum, but he is a possum. And a possum can adapt to his environment, and his offspring can keep those adaptations and add to them for their offspring. Wait, isn't this just evolution? No, it's adaptation. He remains a possum. Black bear. Exactly. Just like you can breed a bulldog, right, to have the the huger head and the flatter nose. Like, you know, you get the, the mother that looks the way you want and the father that looks the way you want to have the puppies that are going to make you the most money. That's literally what it is. They're still dogs. They're still bulldogs. <laughs> it's Brown not bear, that hard. Bear. They're all bears. If Noah had two mating pairs right. of black bears on the ark, you can get every bear in the world from that. Just like all dogs are wolves. Cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, it's all horseradish. Literally. When does it quit being horseradish? Never. Adaptation, not evolution. But the DNA shows common design. Building Ooh. blocks put in a specific order for a specific purpose. But retroviruses show that viruses are more than we think they are, boys and girls. Flu shot? <laughs> A virus is how humans learn to talk, according to academia. Why do you want to prevent those? Why would you want to prevent those? Why would you want to prevent those? Why would you want to manufacture those? What are you doing with that? I already know. Forced adaptation is called eugenics, boys and girls. Gene wow. editing. Never mind, I'm not trying to lose this too early. I came here to tell you all about the Song of Solomon. I don't even know what I'm doing. Now to break everyone's heart who thinks that they are special because of what shade of brown their skin is. Skin color comes from where you live in relation to the equator, sun exposure, climate, temperature, and what you are eating. How could what you're eating make any difference? Are you farming? Are you keeping herds and drinking milk? Eating leafy greens you grew? Or are you hunting for your food? In the full exposure of the sun. Part of the equation boils down to where are you getting your vitamin D from? Is it from your produce and agriculture, or is it from the sun? Oh, well, that makes sense. And this might seem like a heavy coincidence, but it's actually not at all. Places with much more sun exposure in the south don't have as good agricultural soils to grow food in. You need moisture to grow food, and there's plenty of food to be had. You just gotta know how to get it. You might say, yeah, but this is desert right here, and they're nomadic. Herdsmen, they keep herds. Yeah, and they drink milk and cover their skin from the sun. 
And so what color are those desert herdsmen? Science! I can tell you what color they are. Tell me what they're eating. Tell me what their people have been eating for a thousand years. I'll tell you what color they are. Where are they? Tell me what they're eating. I'll tell you what color they are. It's that easy. It's not a mystery. Are you getting your vitamin D from the stuff you're growing and the animals you're herding and the milk you're drinking? Or are you getting it from the sun because you don't have agriculture or herds or milk? God takes care of his creation, which is robust in every environment. Amen. God only ever separated people. And I'm going to sound like a broken record because I know I've said this before, but it was always by tribe and language. And the only time he told people not to reproduce with another tribe was because they had Nephilim DNA. That's it. Science proves that all humanity came from one man and one woman. Before we watch the clip, we're going to read the verses that our brother Ryan put in this post. Genesis 1, 27, KJV. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis 3, 20 and 21. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Genesis 2, 21 and 22. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. I believe that the Bible is true and that Jesus is my Savior. Has science actually proven that Adam and Eve were real and that we are all their descendants? Check this out. In 1987, Rebecca Kahn, Mark Stone King, and Alan Wilson published a paper in the journal Nature that dropped a bombshell on our understanding of human origins. Until then, the prevailing theory held that different groups of humans had evolved separately in different regions. But that turned out to be totally wrong. Their groundbreaking work revealed that all humans carried mitochondrial DNA in their cells that dated back to a single woman. There isn't just a mitochondrial Eve, which is the mother of all women. There's also a genetic Adam, known as Y-chromosomal Adam. When did they live? According to mainstream science, mitochondrial Eve and Y-chromosomal Adam lived between 150 and 200,000 years ago. However, in the peer-reviewed paper, modeling the recent common ancestry of all living humans, scientists calculated that everybody living today does in fact have the exact same ancestors, and that these ancestors lived between five and 7,000 years ago. The Bible is what tells us everything that we need in life. Wow. Listen, God's timeline, 70 weeks are determined upon my people, 7,000 years. We're roughly almost at 6,000 years. You guys, listen, more and more science. Listen, that paper came out in 87. Have you heard of that? Because I haven't heard of it. It's funny that they try to hide the truth and there's still people that think we're monkeys floating around on a spinning ball. <laughs> Now we have a clip from Shattered Paradise. This original video was about 40 minutes long and I chopped it up to about 19 minutes. So if you are interested in watching the whole thing, uh, head on over to their channel. They have a lot of really good content over there. We are witnessing high drama play out on the world stage. Some masterfully crafted political theater is mesmerizing and captivating the masses with Oscar-worthy performances by vision-impaired <laughs> Secret Service agents, deranged lone gunmen, and persuasive propaganda pushing political pundits. But it's important to note that just because there may be a false flag, an inside job that is part of a greater conspiracy, does not mean that every individual that is involved in the event is aware of the plot. And here's right. a fact that few understand. Not all engineered events are orchestrated by men. When you begin to see a number of seemingly unlikely coincidences 
start to pile up, going against natural odds and probability, like bullets whizzing past the head just to nick the tip of the ear. There's likely a strong spiritual force guiding the course of events. For instance, right. take Witchcraft. the new footage that just leaked of the Bohemian Grove ritual ceremony, which took place July 13th, the same day as the Trump assassination attempt. Oh, we covered that, but I did not know that it came out the same day. And I'll let you know, the channel that put those videos out, they had uh, to take down two of them because guess what? Bohemian Grove copyright striked them. So the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Revelation 18.2 describes the state of mystery Babylon after her fall as a habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. I believe Babylon has not completely fallen yet. Therefore, the unclean and hateful birds have not been caged and are out and on the loose, one of them being the Isle of Bohemian Grove. These occult practitioners officiating this ritual using ceremonial magic are not in control of the end result. They are relying on spirits they have summoned to influence events and circumstances in order to manifest their desired outcome. But what ultimately comes to pass may or may not be exactly what the spellcasters expect. We know that the Most High Abba Yahuwah is ultimately in control. We also know that the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. Job 9.24. Napoleon, Alexander the Great, Donald Trump, we're all cut from the same cloth. We've got blood on the campaign trail. Blue blood sprinkled on a campaign trail. Blue blood. A trail that has left behind a multitude of breadcrumbs, calling cards leading back to some of the most diabolical spiritual forces which have all seemingly assembled together for this end times false messiah deception. Who could it be? I just don't know. Could it be? You see, this series of unlikely events have all converged to catapult Donald Trump beyond the mere White House right into the hearts of patriotic Americans as a messiah-like figure. The spellcasters and the entities they serve have decided to play the ultimate Trump card. This enough is enough card from the 1994-95 Illuminati card game is one of many that seemingly predict future events. Everything from 9-11, the Pentagon attacks, the pandemic, to this recent Trump assassination attempt. If you look closely at the central figure, Wow, did you see what it says? It says, at any time, at any place, our snipers can drop you. Have a nice day. It really resembles Trump. It's framed by two triangles, one pointing up, the other pointing down. As above, so below. Right. But in between leaves a space resembling the trace of a speeding bullet whizzing by right around air level. But a bright line in the sand and we will protect you, that I can tell you, and we will say enough is enough. Throw up the uh, 666 a little more, why don't you? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This is the year the American people say enough is enough. And they tried to kill the next president of the United States. Enough was enough. And I said, let trump mania run wild, brother. Let trump mania rule again. Let trump mania make America. He said, let him rule this again. This 30-year-old Enough is Enough card states, at any time, at any place, our snipers can drop you. Have a nice day. Yes, 
These cards are a medium for predictive programming, telegraphing the occult brotherhood's future plans, but they are also a form of divination, similar to tarot cards and right. other tools used by occultists that makes who wish sense. to peer through time and influence future events. Let's look at July 13th and decode some of the esoteric symbolism of the day. This particular Black Rock commercial, that's exactly what this is. Black Rock went to Pennsylvania and they filmed this commercial. And it just so happens that Thomas Matthew Crooks is in their commercial. Saturn Day. Oh, man. Police have already been alerted that there's a man climbing with a rifle on top of the roof. So 42 seconds before the president is shot, you can see the Secret Service sniper team prone position looking through their scopes in the direction of the shooter. Then about six minutes later, 42 seconds before the president is shot, six, they are four, now two. in a prone position using their he scopes, just said, taking a- He just said six, six, six. First he said 42 seconds, then he said six, seconds later then he said 42 seconds again literally telling you and you know what's funny is there it's so you have to know what you're looking for in order to see it at this individual across 150 yards uh, from where the president 150? is speaking 150 what's that one plus five plus zero five plus one is six again they see him clearly they know that he has a long rifle and they do not fire upon him why did they not take the shot? 42 seconds later, shots rang out and President Trump is hit. Why did they allow him to get off a shot? Well, they see him on this roof. Why did they too. stand down? Why did they not do anything? Again, gross incompetence or an inside job? This 42. And also, did you see he's wearing a Philadelphia shirt as well? <laughs> yeah. Seconds, spiritually, is very significant. Ah. Uh. His parents have worked as professional counselors, according to public records. Both of Thomas Cook's parents were social workers, a form of psychologist. MK Ultra was created by psychologists. These funds have been earmarked for military spending. The victim was in earshot of the assailant. Spiritually, a wounded right ear is significant. Trump's right ear was pierced by a bullet, and the last time the mainstream media highlighted a wounded ear is when Tyson bit off Holyfield's right ear. Oh my goodness, he's got a bloody right ear! Holyfield bit by a dirty Mike Tyson! Which has cannibalistic overtones. Yes. In the Bible, Leviticus 8.23, Moses put ram's blood on the right ear of Aaron the priest, and in John 18.10, Peter cut off the right ear of the high priest's servant. Given the nature of this assassination attempt being such a close call, it is not surprising that many who identify themselves as patriotic Christians are claiming that this is an act of God. If also, you, check out that 88 up there. Didn't, if you didn't believe in miracles before Saturday, you better be believing right now. Thank God. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And our God, Amen. our God still saves. He still delivers and he still sets free. Because on Saturday, the devil came to Pennsylvania. Hmm. The devil came to Pennsylvania. Well, the devil is a deceiver. So yes, the deceiver was very active in Pennsylvania that day. Sure Thank was. God! You must understand that God is a generic title, not a name. In the Bible, Satan is even referred to as a God. Yep. The God of this world. Yes. On the back of the dollar bill, it says, in God we trust. Right next to the phrase, Novus Order Seclorum, meaning new order of the ages, our new world order. 
This is underneath the Great Pyramid with the illuminated eye of Horus. Horus is another hateful and unclean bird which has not yet been caged. So it is fitting that they would have Tim Scott deliver this speech wow. tying God and divine intervention to Trump and the Republican Party right in front of the pyramid in the eye of Horus. The hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Those of you who really follow our work know that we have been tracking and exposing the works of this coalition of spirits for a while now. Just a few weeks ago, we highlighted Donald Trump's bizarre Hannibal Lecter reference at his campaign rally, tying his praise and admiration for Hannibal Lecter to the third installment of the Silence of the Lamb series titled The Red Dragon. This invocation was quickly added onto and reinforced by the self-proclaimed witch Ariana Grande. You are a witch? I am indeed, the mm. witchiest witch. Ariana has inadvertently expressed her praise and admiration for this cannibalistic spirit by stating that Jeffrey Dahmer would be her dream dinner guest. Years ago, before the Dahmer series, before it was, I was in a Q&A with fans, with young fans. It was young fans at the time. Mm -hmm. It was like, I think it was like in between was like me being cat and pop stuff. So it was like okay. a younger group. Okay. But it was with a parent. Someone said, if you could have dinner with anyone living or, or dead, who, who would it be? And I was like, oh, you're so cute. Who, um, mom and dad, is it okay if I give the real answer? <laughs> and they were like... Sure, I guess. <laughs> What's the answer? And I was like, um, I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer's pretty fascinating. I think I would have loved to have met Shocked. him. Wow. <laughs> like, you know, maybe with a third party or something yeah. involved, but yeah. I, I question. There is clearly an occult agenda behind this line of questioning. Some of you may remember when they asked the cannibalistic actor, Army Hammer, the same question. Furthermore, he made a mysterious statement during an interview with Netflix Brazil. The interviewer asked Army to name an ideal dinner guest, to which Army responded, Marquis de Sade. For those who are unfamiliar, the Marquis de Sade was a philosopher known for his views on sexuality. The term sadism is derived from his name. As he was known to practice sexual activities where one person gains enjoyment from inflicting pain on another. In 1785, Marquis de Sade wrote a novel called 120 Days of Sodom. 120 Days of Sodom is not only filled with themes of bondage and sadism, but graphic themes of cannibalism. In the so-called Chinese Year of the Dragon, their dragon invocations are reaching a fevered pitch. Take a look at the 270-foot <laughs> oh. dragon wrapped around oh one God. of the country's most iconic skyscrapers, the Empire State Building, right here in New York City. So what is it doing there? Actually, it's all part of oh. the new season of HBO's Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon. Epstein Island was part of a genetic breeding program, and it was just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Peter Nygaard's island, Nygaard Key, which was a genetic harvesting operation. And they both are just a stone's throw from Richard Branson's island. Branson being the owner of a stem cell cloning company. In the midst of all oh this my live, gosh. the human flesh craving, young boy grooming, call me by your name actor, Army Hammer, in the midst of the Cayman Islands. Donald Trump owns a sprawling beachfront estate in St. Martin's. You see, this is a spirit. <sighs> when someone is playing the 1994 Illuminati card game, each player must choose to play as one of the eight classes of Illuminati Brotherhoods. There is a class named the Adepts of Hermes, another class is called the Servants of Cthulhu, and lastly, we want to highlight a mysterious class called the Bermuda Triangle. As we move forward, it will become clear to those with spiritual discernment that these are the cards being played. Donald Trump's mm. vice presidential pick, J.D. Vance, isn't just a friend of some of corporate America's worst billionaires. He is their creation. Former PayPal CEO Peter Thiel enabled J.D. Vance's entire career. In 2017, Thiel donated more than $15 million to Vance's Senate campaign 
personally escorting Vance to Mar-a-Lago to solidify his political puppet's relationship with Donald Trump as his new apprentice. A U.S. drug company sponsored by J.D. Vance's backer, Peter Thiel, secretly conducted human trials for a herpes vaccine on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts. Thiel, the co-founder of PayPal, is one of several big-name investors who have backed the offshore testing of the experimental herpes inoculation by the company Rational Vaccines, the Daily Beast reported. The trials Rational. reportedly were performed in St. Kitts from April to August 2016 without approval of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. You see the caduceus, because these are the adepts of Hermes, working in the Bermuda Triangle to serve the insatiable appetite of Cthulhu. This hungry Marine Kingdom spirit of bondage is building a stronghold in the Caribbean. Like Ghislaine Maxwell with her Terramar project, Peter Thiel is big on the idea of seasteading, taking advantage of the fact that there is no legal jurisdiction in international waters, no government oversights, wow. so Trump is still keeping his Epstein connections close. Which leads us right to the Illuminati's most coveted card, the Immortality Serum. Now, Rose what do you think the immort Immortality Serum has in it? K-I-D-S, something that comes from K-I-D-S. ...have been cast for this false messiah programming and now are being played out through a number of social engineering theater rehearsals. The most prominent of them being the psychological conditioning aimed at the Israelites. For months now, we have been witnessing the occult-infused rap feud that has totally enthralled the world, a battle between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. A this was a spiritual diversion, where the rapper Drake personifies not only the dragon, with the etymology of his name Drake being derived from the dreaded flying serpent, Draco. but his label OVO, represented by the bird that rules the night, the mystical bohemian fowl of the dark, the owl. On the flip side, Kendrick Lamar's diss tracks toward Drake had been harnessed by the Democratic Party and used as weapons against Trump. This is from Biden's official campaign site. The Biden and Harris campaign posted a video slideshow of unflattering photos of Trump while a verse from Kendrick Lamar's diss song, Euphoria, plays in the background. Quote, it's always been about love and hate. Now let me say I'm the biggest hater. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak diss. Now with the rise of Kamala Harris, this video clip takes on new significance oh, as she aims so to unlikable. divide and conquer. Referencing Kendrick Lamar's hit disc record, Not Like Us, redirecting its potent spiritual energy toward her political opponents. So what's on your mind? Oh, Madam VP Harris, I'm worried about the election. Women's reproductive rights are on the line. Our Supreme Court is on the line. Our base. Listen, I hate the way they say that reproductive rights. No, you mean the ability to hire a contract on a liver to um, on a live your unborn child. That's what you're most worried about. If that's your number one worry, I would really look deep inside your heart because that's. Oh, man, it just. Imagine that being your number one worry in life is whether or not you have the right to literally unalive your unborn child basic freedom my opinion i'm speculating are being tested madam vp i know you've been traveling across the country what are you hearing yeah girl i'm out here in these streets and let me tell you you're right taraji there is so much at stake in this moment the majority of us believe in freedom and equality but these extremists as they say, they not like us. No, uh, they not. There's a full-on attack on our fundamental freedoms. Yup. 
Yep. And honestly, Can- okay, you guys got to see the like the similarities between what's going on in these clinics today and what was going on when they sacrificed a ball or put the the babies in the statue of Moloch. And, and then what did they do? Bang the drums or something so that you couldn't hear the screaming? Like now the priests wear scrubs. And um, we have seen in videos before that these clinics have ties to Satanists. Drake is being cast as the Messiah figure. Or Luciferians. Who slayed the dragon thing. Drake and caged OVO, the unclean and hateful bird. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Both Kendrick and Drake are signed under Lucian Grange, who was knighted by the Red Dragon bloodlines. And you know who else was knighted? Donald Trump. Let me know what you guys think about this video. And like I said, they do a really good job of like putting the puzzle pieces together. And they've got a lot of really good content on their channel. Again, it's Shattered Paradise. This is a video about a book called The Book. Creative. This is the book, the ultimate guide to rebuild civilization. And you can see sacred geometry right here on the front. If it's not apparently obvious, while this is branded as a really cool niche item that holds the collective knowledge of all of civilization and technology in it, such that you could rebuild it if ever there was a complete reset, you begin to immediately see biblical imagery with goats and sheep, images of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, witchcraft type rituals. And I know if you think I'm over exaggerating, Look at that witch hidden behind there. And little demons hidden on almost every page. What this really is, is the knowledge that the Nephilim gave to the pre-flood Israelites. This is the knowledge that ruined mankind. Here's what I think happened. I think a class of angels called the Watchers came down from heaven and cohabitated with earth women, meaning impregnated them in some sort of like evil inverse of how the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary with Jesus. Their children are half-breeds half angelic seed birthed from the daughters of man. This is where all your half breed mythology like Hercules comes from. This is where mermaids and centaurs come from, half human, half animal. What do you know? This imagery is all over the book. Animals merging with humans, genetic mutations. Just a coincidence, the hands of demons playing humanity like puppets. Greek mythology, demons teaching mankind chemistry and astrology working together to build civilization and man summoning genies from vessels. The reason this is important is because it's a cautionary tale of transhumanism. See his leg right there being mechanical? It started off with humans merging with animals and it ends up with humans merging with AI. Wow. And we know that that is their plan. They've already created a brain that is connected to a computer chip AI, they want, what do they want? The, well, actually, it, this is actually a reality. They have the brain computer interface. All I know is I could not be any more happy that I am going to be caught up in the clouds with our Lord Jesus and will not have to be here for the worst of it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, God. Thank you.
apparently it is possible to transplant a head. A whole freaking head. The head transplant procedure involves removing a person's entire head containing the brain from their current diseased body and attaching it to the body of a healthy, young, brain-dead donor. Oh, head transplants fuck? could provide individuals with severe medical conditions such as terminal cancer, paralysis, spinal cord injuries, or neurodegenerative diseases the opportunity to have a fully functional body while preserving their consciousness, memories, and cognitive abilities. The neurons are the longest-lasting functional cells in the human body. And according to our estimates, the brain is capable of lasting several hundred years, provided that the rest of the body remains young. The brain bridge concept involves the use of the integrated robotics platform comprised of the two autonomous surgical robots, designed to perform simultaneous surgeries on two bodies side by side within a single setup. Like, what is going on? Imagine how weird it would feel to wake up out of surgery and look down and see someone else's body attached to you, but like you're the one moving it. Like this is straight out of a weird sci-fi horror movie. I don't even know. And I want to know if this surgery is actually like, have they perform this surgery yet are there people walking around with someone else's body what the no i mean no like so we're already aware that the politicians have IMDb pages. Like right here, we see the filmography of Kamala Harris. Okay, so as if that wasn't weird enough, wait until you see what I found. Okay, so I did find this on TikTok. However, I personally went on to DuckDuckGo and I looked into this information and i was able to find every single one of these copyrights okay so this woman did film work back in the day and so she knew that you have to copyright your your scripts and so she said if we're watching a movie then where are the scripts? So she explored the copyright website and was able to come across this information. Now, look at the names. Now, I hope you can read it. Uh, there are names like the Biden presidency. Volumes one, two, three, four, five. We've got, oh, the COVID-19 and the Trump presidency, volumes one through five, economic ill, God bless America, history volumes, oh, these ones are extra disturbing, there's one called the uh, incurable volumes, now I looked in to them and they are either uh text or cd so oh make a great president the lost decade no boot on the ground it in time and limit in scope <laughs> now this is literally the scripts this is what we're seeing everything planned out how they want it to go way before it happens and the name of the guy who copyrighted this uh okay i went extra far and i i looked him up right because so he's 93 years old here's his name right on here uh, Rui Han or Hi Kaiser Hansi. So if you look this guy up, you will see that. Actually, I even looked at the address here to see what it looked like, and it's like a uh, 
Yeah, it's a nice house. It's a, a over, you know, almost two million dollars. But he it says that he makes at least five hundred thousand dollars a year. And all of his associates, his known associates, are Chinese American. Do we think it's a coincidence? Like, I, I, I'm sorry, like, what? Why? Why is all this copyrighted? Now, and we know you have to copyright a script. When you combine that with the fact that these politicians have IMDB pages, we really are watching a freaking movie. Don't believe anything that you see. If it's not in the word of God and it has to do with anything other than Jesus, you, it, it's in question. It is absolutely in question. Full stop. Now, Brother Dan, a.k.a. Approved Unto God, is going to be joining us for the continuation of our Sound Doctrine series. And today, we are in Romans chapter 14. Romans 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Now, we answer questions that are in good faith, and you can really pretty quickly tell the difference uh, between a good faith question and a doubtful disputation. Verse 2, for one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. The cross reference for that verse is Colossians 2.16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Okay, we are on verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. The cross reference for that verse is Romans nine twenty. Nay, but O man, who art thou? Repliest against God. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? And we are back in chapter fourteen, verse five. One man esteemeth one day above another; another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. We can give you the information. We can tell you what the word of God says, but you have to be fully persuaded in your own mind, which means you have to seek it out for yourself. Don't take our word for it. And the cross reference on that verse is 2 Timothy 3, 14. But continue thou in the things which... Thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Also Galatians 4, 9. But now, after that ye known God, or rather of known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. Verse 6, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He, de he that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. And that verse is cross-referenced with 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all in the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And then also these two. Also we have 1 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, 
which God hath created to receive, be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Amen. All things were made clean by the bloodshed of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, for none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. And we've got a few, actually three cross-references for that. 1 Corinthians six nineteen, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? I love this verse. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Amen. If Yeah, if we could have been made righteous by the law, then what was the whole point of Jesus coming into the form of a man and shedding his blood on the cross for us? And also we got First Thess 5.10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Okay, back in Romans 14, verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. We got 2 Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen. Verse 9. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. And that's cross-referenced with Acts 10.36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. All means all. Verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And that is referenced with... In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. And that was Romans 2.16. Paul's gospel. We also have 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. And that's what we do in Christ's body. Verse 11, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. And also, I just want to say that when it says we will be judged by what we did on his body, that is just according to the gifts that we will receive, not salvation. And then we have cross references for verse 11. Isaiah 45, 23, I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That at the name, and we have Philippians two ten. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And you see that it says things in earth and under earth. So it must mean that there's things in earth and under. 
Verse 12, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. That's cross-reference with Galatians 6, 5, for every man shall bear his own burden. And also, we're not, uh, we don't pick out every single cross-reference for every single verse. There, there's many more. This is just some of them because we're trying to get this video in uh, about 15 minutes or less to add to to the video right time constraints so. we could probably go for a couple hours if we did every right. single so, cross reference right. so we're not doing every single one so i could yes deep into it but and how, just. yeah also seek it out um check out the cross references for yourself if you go line by line precept by precept and from cross reference to cross reference you can get such a deep understanding and also make sure that you rightly divide yeah, the cross context. references as yeah, well yeah. so take everything yeah you have to double check them they won't they won't be rightly divided okay verse 13 let us not therefore judge one another anymore but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way and an example of a stumbling block could be something like a false gospel or um, a verse that is scriptural but not dispensational that doesn't apply to today that can you know put a a seed in a younger brother and sister's mind and can really uh, harm their walk with christ so all right we have a cross reference for that verse as well first corinthians 8 9 but take heed lest and by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak verse 14 i know and am persuaded by the lord jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean to him it is unclean but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. And the cross reverence for that is Romans twelve seventeen. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. All men. Verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's cross-reference with Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. Also, 1 Corinthians 8, 8, but meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. Amen. And we have verse 18, for he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. And that's context reference with second corinthians eight twenty one, providing for honest things not only in the sight of the lord but also in the sight of men and also Ooh, philippians 4 8 finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Okay. Verse 19, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. And that's cross-reference with 1 Corinthians 7, 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God hath called us to peace. And also 2 Timothy 2, 22, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Yeah, do it um, honestly and genuinely. Mm -hmm. A lot of vain babbling going on. Has to have a chapter and a verse. Or... 
Amen. And, and you know, not coming with the uh, the idea that you just want to be smarter than somebody or, or bring condemnation, right? Or get a one up, conscious, right? Yeah. Also, First Corinthians fourteen twelve. Even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Amen. Exactly what we were just saying. Not not doing it for uh, yourself or just for the knowledge to puff yourself up. Right. Just to edify another brother and sister in Christ or minister to somebody and bring them to Christ with the knowledge and uh, wisdom. And we have... First Thess 5.11 as well. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also ye do. Right, and our, we're going to finish up in Romans 14, verse 20. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is neither good to eat flesh, Wait, it is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned, if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin." Appreciate you all joining us for our daily bread, um, daily training. We're able ministers of the New Testament. God's will for all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. So with that, we're edifying other brothers and sisters to grow in the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of our Lord. To present every man perfect at the judgment seat. Can't wait to meet you all in the clouds. I love you all in Christ, grace and peace. Thank you guys for joining me for another video. I love every single one of you and I will see you next time. Ne this time, if you made it all the way to the end, put I love Jesus in the comments. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay prayed up and stay highly motivated. <laughs>